Hey guys, Anthony Scott, Toy Hunt USA. I'm here with my good buddy C. We got the Four Horsemen. How you doing, Anthony? How's it going? PowerCon 2018. You having fun? I'm having a great time. That's good. You know, yesterday's con was so interesting. I thought that all the feedback that Scott gave, the feedback gave, Check it out. There's coverage on the site right now. It was really good. It was one of my favorite panels we've done in a long time because, I mean, we've been doing uh, Masters of the Universe based lines for years and years, but my favorite by far is Masters of the Universe classics. And we got to be up on stage with guys that we worked with from the very beginning and guys who were very integral in getting that line out to the public. And and keeping it out there in the public. Um, Dave Boss was on the panel with us. Scott Knight, Bill Vinicky. I mean, three of our favorite people that we've ever worked with. And three guys who really fought long and hard to keep that line on the shelf, or not on the shelves, and getting out to fans. And uh, just, first of all, just being on the panel with those guys again and getting to see them again was fantastic. But. Um, the moderator was really good. The questions that he asked, I mean, it's just, it was just a fun panel. We got to talk about the origins of how Masters of the Universe Classics came to be. Jim is trying to squeeze by us. Yeah. I don't know if we should let him. How's it going, Jim? All right. <laughs> So, um, at all the releases, everything you've done, all the Masters Universe classics figures, um, which one was your personal favorite? I mean, it could be Trap Jaw. Mm. Could be Trap Jaw. I really like Trap Jaw. He was always one of my favorites. Um, Roboto was always a favorite of mine as far as figure goes, just because of the technical aspects of the character. And any of the beast, monster kind of characters, they're always my favorites. If I had to just pick one guy, probably Beast Man. He was always a favorite of mine. Roboto uh, was interesting, what they were saying yesterday at the panel. All those internal gears and everything, and despite all the hard work, Scott said he was the figure that took the longest, and just to have it back with the reverse shoulders, yeah. it sounded like he was going crazy at the time. They really worked hard on that because when that figure was originally done in prototype form, none of the gears worked. We weren't doing any kind of action features with the Masters of the Universe classics, but Roboto is one of those kind of characters, kind of like Mechanic, where you have to have the actual feature in there in some way. Whether it's actually the physical working mechanism or something that kind of very much represents it. So we put the gears in there and they were just solid gears and didn't work. Mattel decided, wait a minute, we want to make these work. So they took each of those gears <laughs> and... He's I can, distracting Yeah, me. I can see yeah. <laughs> Uh, I took each of those gears, and, I mean, they took each of those gears and they separated them, and they had to run those gears in a material that wouldn't chip and wouldn't break, and they had to each be run separately because they're different colors and you can't paint the material that they had to run them in. So each of those gears had to be run separately in different molds by themselves over and over again. It was just a nightmare for them to produce. It sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, it was. It took forever for them to produce that figure. Wow. Uh, anything came out good. Yeah. We're really, really happy with the results. Yeah. Came out good. It's just too bad that 2000 X version of Roboto didn't come out. Right. That's my personal favorite. Uh, Design of the character. What do you mean? It uh, hasn't been on in the 2000X. Oh, you mean in the classics? Yeah. Classics, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a little bit different body shapes and stuff. There's yeah. no reason we couldn't create a few new body shapes and make the 2000X. No. I'm hoping that Super 7 brings in the 2000X style yeah. into classics. That's one thing they haven't done. They did Quake New Adventures. But that was it. Yeah. As far as that. So, Vantana, uh, filmation style. What? Let me just show you guys. The reason he's asking about Mantana is because he's yeah. a Mantana fan. Yeah, so I bought just... these animation stills this morning. It's probably like one of a kind, something like that. Yeah. You know, it's probably not too many copies of these. But I bought two of them, forty dollars each. That's a good price for those. It is. You can't say no to this. No, you can't. But uh, Mantana, we did a. Uh, 
I'm Antana in that fil filmation style for Super Seven's line. So, what did you think of that? I think I want it now. I don't want to wait. <laughs> we did okay with it. I think you, as usual, knocked that out. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. That's and, one. Uh, just like the other one, the eyes come out. Yep. Well, that's how that works. It's the eyes don't like pop out physically. Okay. Again, it's not going to have the action feature that one will have. It'll come. I don't recall if it comes with extra eye stocks where you pop the eyes out and pop the new stocks in, or it comes with an extra head where the eye stocks pop out. But yes, you'll you'll be able to create the version of the eyes just in the head or the eyes popping out of the head. Either one. That's great. Yeah. You know, that's the way to do it when yeah. you're not doing action features anymore. That's like, like I said, it's kind of like Mech and Eck and Roboto. That's one of the characters that you really, even though you might not include the the physically changing action action feature, it has to have some element that makes that action appear to be there. It just needs to be there. That's great. Uh, what else? The retro style figures. Uh -huh. They just introduced a new wave coverage on the site, guys. So I have USA.com all there now. Yep. And uh, how is those turning out, do you think? They're going really well. I'm not sure what the sales are on yet, but the response, fan response, has been really positive. Yeah. Um, right. It sounds like they're doing good. It sounds yeah. like the first wave. Yeah, we, it sounds like they sold pretty well. I, I hope they continue to sell well because people have been asking for those for a while. And there are characters that you know have not been produced and I don't know how many years they're being done in that. 30 years. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, Eldor and um, uh, who was the other hero? Hero, We did them in classics, but done in this very, very accurate to the original prototype style hasn't been done before and I think you know fans have they responded positively to it. Hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more of this. I didn't check this before and I should have, but I don't really think those two were offered in the US in the it's just one they were offered I think is it the UK if I have They were never released. They never released. No, they, okay. they were never released. There was there were prototypes showing up of them and they were solicited, but I don't think they got they actually produced them and, and got them out on the show. Yeah, they, they I got a double check. Okay. Yeah, I should have checked double check. <laughs> That's all right. It's hard to memorize every day. Yeah. It's so much. Uh, Mythic Legions. Yes, sir. Now, how's that working for you guys? You guys showed off a new horse. Yes, yes, that, we did. Uh, I'll shoot with the video a little later. So what we what we're doing is um, we've been saying for a long time that we're eventually going to release. Um, Rides, steeds, creatures for Mythic Legion's characters to ride upon. And the first reveal we've done is one of the uh, horses of the main bad guys of Mythic Legions are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Not not a lot of people know that, but that's what it's going to be. They're like the main bad guys. And the first one that will be released, or the first one we've revealed, is War, or a guy named Arathir. He represents War, and that's his horse. And we're going to be, when we release those, we're going to release the other three horses in the apocalypse. And they're the horses as well. We're also going to, also going to release um, a few other riders with horses. And we're going to release what we're going to call Legion Builder horses. They're going to be very basic horses with basic paint applications, lower price point than. The, My buddy was uh, here, the, but the more he deluxe so. And we haven't got the price points worked out on them quite yet. We um, have the the uh, tooling for the figures sent over to the factory, so the factory's pricing them out. Right. So once we get those prices back, obviously we'll let people know what those are going to roughly run. And I think we're going to do a pre-order. We're not sure yet if it's going to be a Kickstarter I, or not. I still might just be a pre-order, pre but I like it. In I got the year, winter, early spring, 2019. I got the other one. Okay. Yeah, so well, that's very exciting. There's yeah. a lot of detail. I'm looking at the Thank you saddle much. as you're talking about it. There's Thank a lot. You guys are having <coughs> fun here. Yeah, we're having a great time. Yeah. 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 Yesterday yeah. it had yeah. the shields yeah. on it yeah. and the sword. Yeah. That's remarkable. Well, it had the shield on it earlier today, too. It's actually laying inside the horse there, but somebody came up and thought they were going to pick it up. And before I could stop them, they snapped the little holder off from the shield. It's just a prototype, it's not production. But I glued it back on. It's probably hard enough that I'll, before you take pictures, I'll get the shield put back in. Place. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, let's see. Um, I took a few figures. These are final production, and I'll show more figures are in front of the camera. 
That's Gong this guy. Gongs, yeah. yeah. You know, I can never memorize the name of these oh, guys. Me either. They're hard to remember. Because they are. And they're hard oh, to spell. We're, we're, we're over 100 characters in the Mythic oh, Legions now. So, yeah, some of the names are getting a little tough to remember. But, yeah, this is Gongs. He's a, uh, a berserker um, goblin. He's one of the beefier, bulkier goblins. And he's the guy that when you're going into battle, you have a few of these guys on the front line to break the ranks of the other guys before your fast little... Uh, bladed goblins go in and slice people to pieces. Yeah, and these guys are expendable, so you, know, yeah. you can afford to yeah. lose And they're guys heavily and armored, armor, so yeah. they're kind of tough to beat up, so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you need to get your sword right into his eye or something yeah. like that. Does this mask come off? No. Yeah, it's the mask all sculpted on. Yeah, okay. It's all one piece. It's, all one it's one actually piece. a couple pieces, but there's no face under there. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that would have been nice. All right, I grabbed three. Thank you. Yeah. Now this one is one of my favorites from the new reveal. Let me turn her around. Me too. Guys. She really, I mean, seeing photos of her or video of her, do not do her justice. Thanks, Jeff. He's gonna get yeah. better, uh, better photos of her later. Yeah. But, but yeah. look at that remarkable detail. Thank you. Just spectacular sculpting there. Look at that right the mouth, the yep. sword. Unbelievable. And I love these stands. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, these... the stands we sell on the site for I think it's five bucks a piece. And they work really well for Mythic Legions and other toy lines. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I should get some of these stands. You know, especially on Masters, the earlier figures. Uh, with the beans, yeah. you know, they're all over and everything. Yeah, they fit really well with Masters. For yeah, these, these are great. I love the fact you guys are using soft boots now. Yeah, yeah we use Cape soft boots for the capes, and there are a couple characters that have like little skirt type things. And so we're, and we're using some fur here and there. On the trolls, we have fur and like some uh, burlap, kind of loincloth things going on. Yeah. This is the first female demon, Zarya. Yeah, this is remarkable. She's Azar and Zazar's sister. Uh, okay, I was about to the say. The blue demon yes. and the yellow demon that we really yeah. saw already. Are there going to be repaints of her, you think? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's very popular, so yeah, we'll, we'll be releasing yeah. other colorways of her. Yeah, absolutely. More sisters, yep. cousins, stuff like that. Yep. You've got to build the ranks. <laughs> yeah. That's They're awesome. awesome. So, let me ask you about those He-Man statues over there. Tila well, what those are, those are two ups. Two ups, okay. Uh, we did the He-Man and the Masters of Universe line for Mattel back in the early 2000s. And we did everything then at two up scale, which is twice the size they're going to be in the finished uh, figure. And he's been hanging out around the <laughs> prototype. <laughs> prototypes. Yeah. He's, he's taking a sword and he's like going like that and looking at me. Yeah. I'm gonna use you as a human shield, okay? <laughs> if you want me, you gotta go through him. <laughs> but uh, the, they were; uh, those are the two prototypes for those figures, and they've been sitting on our shelves for years. We cart them out every once in a while, especially on the East Coast when we have a convention or show to go to. Sometimes we'll pull some of those out, but we figured, you know, we're coming out here to PowerCon and a lot of fans, especially here on the West Coast, have never seen those before. So we pulled them out and brought them here. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen those in person before. Yeah. They don't get out very often. They're kind of getting old, a little bit frail, a little bit brittle, so. Yeah. We have to use a lot of glue to keep them, get, keep them together these days. Well, that's good. How did you get them? Did you ship them here? Yeah, yeah, we should. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Walk here by <laughs> yeah. Jim said they well, walked here by themselves. Yeah. Well, they could have. I mean, they look so lifelike. <laughs> like little, uh, two little Chuckies running across the expressway, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they drove here themselves. Yeah. Hey, why not? You know, kidnap a couple, force them to drive them across yeah. the country. I don't know where you came up with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like Chucky did in the movie. Oh, That's, right, right. Yeah. Um, going back to classics, there were some other Super 7 figures that uh, are on shelves right now. I think, um, uh, not Man at Arms, but who are they showing? 
I don't know. I haven't gotten to walk around yet. I walked around once yesterday when I went to use the restroom. I, I didn't. I haven't even got to look in the Super Seven booth because it's been crowded every time I've been over there. Oh, God. So I'm not sure even what they have on display. <laughs> you've been here. I'll have to go look. Yeah, yeah. you've got to go look. And I That's, should remember. I'm my plan is it. to go now that Jim's back to watch the booth and we'll go walking around here. Let me ask you this: retro figures. Yes, sir. The, uh, I know you guys don't work on those. But what do you think of those? Do we do like do those? the retro figures. No, not the, uh, the retro reaction, I'm sorry. Oh, reaction. Oh, those are spectacular. Yeah. Like, not just, I love the Masters of the Universe ones too, but the other retro figures, I mean, the, uh, yeah, me saying, reaction figures, yeah. they're it's doing too. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. The reaction figures they're doing are just unbelievable. The, the Universal Monsters ones they're doing, and the, especially the Planet of the Apes, <laughs> phenomenal. I just told Je uh, Josh yesterday, I was like, I didn't realize the Planet of the Apes ones were out. I need a set of those. So he's going to yeah. help me out and get a set of those because, yeah, those yeah. are fantastic. They need to get that job. play set, too. The I, Planet of the Apes play set? They released the play set, too? Yeah, during, um, during San Diego Comic Con. Didn't even know that. Yeah. Shows you how much I know. Well, you weren't there this year. Oh, well, that's right. It wasn't so, there. Yeah. You know, we didn't do the play set. Yeah, we, no. We've done some work on those, though. You said we did. We're doing like the molding and casting of those. Like we get sent the waxes, and then we do the molding and casting, and then send those off to Super Seven to do the production. Oh, that's great. Jim actually does that. You know, I just thought uh, that filmation she wrote oh, is on yeah. display. Oh, so, yeah. How did that uh, come down to get she wrote in filmation style? There hasn't been too many. No, there hasn't. But you know what? Kordak, and yeah. That's it. What's going on is we found out that the um, the filmation stuff seems to be selling a little bit better than the um, Grace Club Grace School stuff. So we decided, you know what, let's see how many characters we can get out the filmation side. And, you know, fans are responding to it positively and it seems like they want that more. So we started releasing more, and obviously. She Rock, that's a no brainer. I mean, if you don't have her, got to do her inflammation style because that look for that character is so iconic. Yeah, you know, now that Mattel has done the most part of vintage line, all those are done in classic style. What Super 7 is doing now, besides filmation, are fan requested characters. And that's definitely a good way to go, but it's no surprise that Filmation is now doing better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I just, uh, not everything, there's a lot of the stuff that's been released uh, so far. I mean, we have always been on the uh, board and turning your phone in. Here, I'll get it. They rebooted Masters back in 2002. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Gotta be on screen, man. I know. I'm trying to hide screen? like Jim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm but, uh, just following his lead. Yeah. Uh, I forget what he's saying. The um, uh, filmation. Oh, the better. Than yeah. Uh, I mean, you gotta get the fans that they want, and they obviously like the filmation stuff quite a bit. It's it's like selling like crazy for Super Seven, so we'll just keep doing it. That's true. Is there any character well, I mean, that really we're dealing with now is we're actually Shira side of filmation. Shira, yeah. We're continuing the classics mm -hmm. line. Actually, uh, Antenna was a uh, Shira character. Yeah, yeah. that's that. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, any of the evil horde that we haven't done in filmation style, yeah. I would love to do. So we just kind of, even if they haven't, we went like, the if they that. were never released as a toy, or never, if they were never on the filmation cartoon, but they were a horde character, yeah, I would love to do them and like, like take that and, and do it in a filmation style. Like a mini comic character. Yeah. Stuff like that. But do it in filmation yeah. style. Well, let's see if I can remember the full title of this thing. We're going to change it next year so it has a more concise official title. But this past one we just did was called uh, G-Con 2018, no, no, G-Con NJ 2018 Apocalypticon. That's what it was. 
So next year, it's called Jihad, because it's in honor of our friend George Gaspar. Uh, we've been in the toy industry with him for years. So remember when he first came into the toy industry? He was here for all our toys, and he came there working in uh, he was working pretty part time at first. Yeah, very short period of time. He worked with him for our toys. I thought it was really good old days. That was like the Wild West there. Then. It was crazy there. Then. And then uh, working on Spawn back then. Yeah, working on Spawn. All those things were ahead. They kind of like set the standards for what, what action figures would eventually become. Uh, yeah. And I don't think Todd gets enough credit for that. I mean, he wasn't the one actually hands on doing the scoping work, but he was the guy who had the vision to say, let's go ahead and do this. Even though the big company was saying, you can't do toys that way, he was like, yeah, we can. Yeah, I don't think he really gets enough credit for that. No, I don't think he does. But yeah, we worked with George there for a while. That's when we first met him. And it's where he was cutting his teeth in the toy industry. Then he eventually moved out to California. And He's just been a good close Doesn't friend of ours forever. If it hadn't been for George, there might not be a mythic because uh, we were trying to figure out how to fund our ravens from God the Tropics and how to fund um, upcoming mythic legions and stuff like that. And George was like, oh, you guys should start a Kickstarter. And we're like, what's that? We had no idea what it was. Wow. And he kind of explained it to us, and he had done a couple of Kickstarters for their Royal MPs and for some other little things they had done and done really well with them. And he kind of explained it to us and kind of helped guide us through it. And then another friend, um, Phil Reed, uh, kind of mentored us through it. And that's how we got started using Kickstarter and Producer Alliance. Like I said, if it hadn't been for George, kind of saying, go this way and try this, we might never, never have gotten the world out today. So, G-Con is a little online convention we are doing, like kind of in honor of George. Um, we decided not to go to Comic Con this year for a lot of various They were missed, dearly. Nobody even knew we were not there. So, I knew. Uh, okay. Well, that, that matters. I'm that matters. You're somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, this good chair over is, blocking out my camera shirt. <laughs> um, so, is that a Godzilla? That's Gamera. Yeah, my favorite kaiju. He's awesome. He's a giant turtle. With, with a big underbite, he shoots flames out of his mouth. Um, sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, it's okay, it's alright. So, uh, you know, in honor of George, we decided to do this online convention instead of Comic Con. We're doing giveaways and we're doing, you know, previews of some of our upcoming stuff. And we're having people come in from not just the toy industry, but geek culture in general come in and like do interviews and talk and hang out and just generally have a, a fun day just hanging out and we put it all on video. We have fans kind of interacting with us a little bit. Um, we invited you to come but you blew us off for some other convention. Hey, well, let me explain that. <laughs> now I got to defend myself. I deeply apologize for not being there. Yeah. It was, I would have had to leave 48 hours after turning to the being there about seven days. Yo, you can do that. Uh, I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, and I had no one to watch my dog. Oh, okay. okay. Well, so that's an excuse. I said that in my email. You could have brought your dog. So, uh, <laughs> he's 12. He doesn't oh, do good yeah. on car rides. He would, yeah, he would have traveled. So, so anyway, um, we're going to do that again next year. Um, I think we'll be a little bit more organized this year. The fan response to it was fantastic. They just seemed to like it. We had our first TBF Live. That was Top of the Bell Friday Live. And the reviews for that were mixed. Some people thought it was hilarious because we just kind of forgot the cameras were there and just did our thing like we normally do on Fridays and had Taco Bell and yeah. kind of bullcrapped with each other. And then uh, some people didn't like it because they got to listen to us eat. <laughs> but um, we're going to do it again next year. And I think it's going to be a little bit bigger and better. We're going to have a lot more uh, guests. We're going to have things a little bit more streamlined. We kind of know how what worked and what didn't work this year. So I think next year it will be a lot better. Yeah, next year I'm going to do it. All right. It's just too soon after Comic-Con. All right. Just six hours. I apologize. We'll try to make the date. 
little different this time. Okay. It was a little hot in the studio too, so may, may make it earlier or later in the year too. To make sure it's cool in the studio. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. So yeah, I, I was not blowing you off. It's not a problem. No, I would be afraid <laughs> to face you the day I blew you off. I would not run into my life. <laughs> I'm a big teddy bear. What am I saying? You would get two now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a teddy bear. Bring a knife out. <laughs> so, all right, guys. <laughs> Scott's wearing right, USA. And I'm going to focus again. <laughs> yeah, you're off camera. Yeah. I think I pulled the cord. Sorry. This about is that. my favorite interview ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's such a I don't, mess. Yeah. I, keep, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. You're that favorite interview. You so heard that right here. The horn boy of the four horsemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Safe travels home. Thank I'll you. See you soon. All right, take Thank care. you. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Thank <laughs> 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 It's one of the new figures, and so is the ice trail. So, this is the Little two statues. You know, there would be a time, hopefully, this is the new force we talked about. It's a bad thing. That's his rider. It's a flame on top of his head. The force also has flames. He's fighting these I think they go to a different figure. Well, I mean, our love of Masters of the Universe itself. To represent this to the time, maybe the different style, maybe the different and maybe we can get back out of the market again. Rather than having, like, completely just trying to be a real and going even farther away from the style, we're going to get back to the next style. And I look like, wait, let's go back to the same style. Let's go back to what we Let's take those new funky, beefy um, just incorporate them to the day stand here to the day stand here. That's the details of style. 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 That's the details of style